Dr. Pawan Goenka is back with us. Dr. Goenka, World EV Day. Uh, just wanted to understand what are your thoughts being an industry veteran and how ready is India? Uh, given that as we speak, Tesla is already making its headway into the country, the poster boy of EVs in that sense, four models getting approved. But how, how much of the resolution has really come in for the big bottleneck, which continues to be infrastructure as we understand? Well, uh, ISO, let me first say that I am uh, very happy that uh, EVs are finally coming of age uh, in India. Uh, I've been talking EVs for 10 years when we first started the EV work uh, and waited for a long time. Now, uh, you're right that the infrastructure is yet not in place uh, fully uh, in terms of charging infrastructure, but I would not say that that will be a big dampener uh, immediately. It's a chicken and egg situation. Now, whether chicken will come first or egg will come first. And I think uh, we have to slowly uh, get our infrastructure in place as we increase the volume on the road. Because uh, if you don't have any vehicles on the road, infrastructure will always, obviously be very difficult. And I would also say that there are certain segments uh, in the electric vehicle uh, uh, sector that does not really require that much of an infrastructure requirement. And we can get more into that. But right now, I will not say that infrastructure is the, uh, the big bottleneck. The big bottleneck, I would say, for passenger vehicles is the fact that there are very few vehicles available uh, for the consumers to choose from uh, and uh, just one or two price points. And uh, what is required really for passenger vehicles to take off is to uh, have the OEMs launch many more vehicles, many more models uh, of electric vehicles so the consumers can choose what they want. Yeah, absolutely. To add to that, you know, as per our understanding, EVs are also not going to be too affordable, Dr. Goenka. Do you think the cost of manufacturing EVs in India as well is going to be a big consideration on how EVs are going to be priced in and what range they're going to come back and the whole, you know, afford affordability argument? Well, this is a little bit of a misconception, I think, that has to change. Uh, and first of all, for affordability, one cannot simply look at the purchase price. One has to look at lifetime cost of owning an electric vehicle. Uh, now, if you look at three-wheeler segment, uh, uh, for example, uh, that is very much affordable with all the incentives the government of India has given uh, in the fame to scheme, plus the state incentives. Uh, the, the cost of buying electric three-wheeler is just about slight margin over a diesel or a CNG, but after that, the, the lifetime cost is significantly lower. And therefore, three-wheeler is very much affordable today. The two-wheelers, the same thing is happening uh, with the famous scheme and with the state incentives. Uh, two-wheelers are now available for less than 60,000 rupees at the lower end and about a lakh or so at the, at the sort of uh, premium end. Uh, not premium premium, but, uh, but at the higher end. And that's a very much uh, uh, a price that consumers are willing to pay. And two-wheeler is, uh, is, is ramping up very rapidly. Three-wheelers are ramping up very rapidly. When it comes to cars, yes, they are a little bit more expensive yet. But I believe that if uh, OEMs are able to launch a sub-10 lakh vehicle uh, that meets the range requirement of 200 kilometer plus uh, and has the normal comfort that one would look for in a, in, in a car, uh, I think it can take off very quickly. Uh, and I don't think we are very far from it. Uh, again, I must say that Government of India has done everything it can uh, to make the electric vehicles affordable. And uh, the, the, the rumor is that uh, in the upcoming PLI scheme, there'll be more incentive given for electric vehicles, uh, and that should be just about it. So I right now don't think that cost should be that much of a deterrent. Uh, the deterrent, if any, uh, for passenger vehicles should be not having enough models and a little bit of charging infrastructure. But even that, you have to understand that for intra-city driving, there is no requirement of a big charging infrastructure because we have easily 200 plus kilometer range and nobody drives more than 200 kilometers in a day uh, in a city. And just look at the convenience of going home, plugging in your vehicle, just like you plug in your mobile phone in the morning, it's fully charged. So I, I, I think we are to some extent uh, overstating uh, that the requirement of uh, uh, electric vehicles, at least for intra uh, of charging, charging at least for uh, uh, for intra-city driving. Dr. Goenka, so good to have you back, and um, so good to connect with you in your new avatar. Dr. Goenka, I'm going to ask a few very basic questions, and purely these are based on personal experience. If I look at a city like Delhi or Mumbai, I doubt that any of the buildings or any of the houses have the infrastructure 
uh, or charging facility. I mean, my building per se does not have a single EV charging station and it may have 100 to 150 cars. Similarly in Delhi, uh, you know, the congested lanes of Delhi, I doubt that anybody will be able to provide that EV infrastructure. So while EV is a very city phenomenon, charging is a huge challenge. Well, uh, Nikunz, uh, I think again, look, this is a change that we will have to bring and some of it will have to be forced, and some of it will happen naturally. Uh, if you look at all the modern complexes, at least in the uh, city of Mumbai, uh, they have a large parking, uh, uh, parking, parking facility available within the complex. And many of them are now looking at putting three, four, five of these uh, uh, for, for, for electric vehicle charging. Uh, even for an individual, uh, if you have an assigned parking spot, and I, I realize that not everybody has an assigned parking spot, it's not a problem at all to pull a cable in there and make it, making it a, a, a charging station for your electric vehicle. So I think the problem is real. I'm not, I'm not uh, downplaying the problem, but I think everything has to come together. And once, once the electric vehicles take off, uh, people will start putting, uh, putting uh, uh, charging infrastructure in offices. Uh, there is no reason why all offices with a parking lot cannot put in few uh, electric charging uh, points there. It's not very expensive to put in uh, for parking lots uh, in uh, city parking lots, municipal parking lots. There's no reason why that cannot be done. Uh, so therefore, therefore, I think it's just a question of little bit of stretching uh, and saying, look, we have to have it happen. We have to make it happen. And to make it happen, we'll have to take some steps that may not be natural uh, to do, uh, and, and then it can happen. Uh, as far as streets are concerned, you're right that with the narrow streets uh, and not having proper parking uh, sort of uh, spaces available, uh, it does become difficult. But there again, one will have to, let's say, around metro stations uh, in, in the city of Delhi. Uh, one can easily create a few parking, uh, parking areas, and uh, there have been a lot of conversations earlier uh, when, when I was... Uh, uh, visiting Delhi often to, to talk about these things. Uh, a lot of conversation that has happened where the city is uh, very open to creating uh, parking, uh, parking spots or charging spots uh, for electric vehicles. And there are many uh, startups in Delhi, especially Delhi is the best for them. But there are many startups that are running electric vehicles in Delhi. They have created a charging infrastructure and they're running as much as 200, 250, 300 kilometers in a day. Uh, and therefore, it's, can, it, it's just a matter of scaling up now, Nikunj. I think the basic things are in place. We just have to scale up. And once we scale up, all of these things that you're talking about, in my opinion, will fall in place. But these are problems that we have to look at. We have, we have to solve this problem. There's no, no question about it. Well, innovation always happens. It's necessity which creates, yes. uh, I guess, invention. And we've all realized it during the COVID time when corporations have been run by CEOs who've been working from their bedrooms and dining tables. So we all know what adaptability, don't we? Mr. Cuenca, there is a clear example in the two-wheeler space where an outsider, which is Ola in this case, has come and disrupted. Ola is also saying that, you know, I'm getting my electric car ready. The point I'm trying to perhaps, uh, uh, you know, understand from you is that do you think there is going to be, the market dominance will be in the passenger car will still be done by the existing player, whether it's a Mahindra or a Tata, whether it is BMW or a Volkswagen, or there is going to be a disruptive new player who will come and surprise everybody? Well, I think, uh, Nikunj, uh, it will be a bit of both. Uh, I'm personally very excited with what Ola is doing with two wheelers right now, because what we need for electric vehicles in every segment to become affordable and desirable uh, is to have a scale of manufacturing. Now, the scale of manufacturing that uh, Ola is putting up will probably make those uh, scooters most affordable and maybe even price parity with, uh, with petrol scooters. And that would definitely, I mean, if the price parity is there, there's no reason why somebody would not want to buy a petrol scooter compared to, I mean, not buy an EV scooter compared to petrol scooter because it gives you everything that you want. Uh, so so uh, in, in two-wheeler, we're already seeing that while the traditional players like Hero, uh, Bajaj are definitely launching electric vehicles, but real disruption is happening from outsiders uh, like Arthur, like maybe Ola uh, uh, and, and, and many other startups that are getting into it. And there must be at least two to three dozen uh, startups that are getting into two-wheelers. Uh, when it comes to three-wheelers, the same story is true. And while the traditional players like Mahindra, like Piazio, 
have launched their electric three wheelers and they're doing quite well, good volume. Uh, but uh, there are many, many, many uh, startups that are launching three wheelers. When it comes to four wheelers, it becomes a little bit more difficult because four wheeler uh, in terms of overall technology uh, that has to go into the basic product and not just the electric uh, powertrain part of it uh, requires a lot of engineering, requires a lot of investment, and therefore it may not be as easy uh, for, for, uh, for uh, a player to come into four wheel. Of course, Tesla is a very good example uh, where somebody who was never in an automotive field has come in and really disrupted the whole whole uh, whole uh, passenger vehicle segment, uh, in fact, taken it to a premium. So that's possible. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's not going to be something that will be a, a cakewalk for anyone. Uh, you'll have to make a lot of investment. You will have to bring in a lot of engineering, and there are a lot of lot of sort of uh, pitfalls uh, that you have in making a four wheeler. So I think in four wheeler it may be a little bit more difficult. But uh, Ola certainly has announced that they have. Uh, there's sort of aspiration to get into four wheelers after two wheelers and uh, with very large investment if they put together a large engineering team uh, it can be done it's not it's not undoable uh, having said that on the other side the the uh, players like mahindra and uh, tata obviously have taken a lead uh, in terms of being in the electric vehicle field for four to five years for passenger vehicles uh, and uh, right now tata has the highest uh, selling uh, electric vehicle model in india and they're not going to sort of lie low uh, each of the players have announced uh, very aggressive plans uh, for investment in electric vehicles uh, whether it's mahindra whether it's tata or many of the uh, many of the mncs who are in india there will be an interesting battle uh, my guess is that the battle in two-wheeler and three-wheeler will be equally fought between the uh, traditional players and new players, where the four-wheeler battle, I think, will tilt towards additional uh, towards the traditional players in India. I'm not saying globally, in India, because it requires a tremendous amount of investment and tremendous amount of, uh, it let, let's take three and a half to four years to launch an uh, electric vehicle, passenger vehicle from where you start. And I don't know if... Uh, 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 investor will have that much patience uh, for a startup to get into it. Somebody like uh, Ola can do it. Sorry, long answer to a question, but uh, uh, but uh, I thought I should explain that. Okay. Hi, Dr. Goenka. This is Mubina as well joining in. So yes, um, you know, the two-wheeler EV space is definitely a buzz. There are lots of startups, three-wheelers as well. PVs may take a little time. My question is that uh, will this semiconductor chip shortage issue that currently the auto sector is facing, um, you know, push the uh, entire PV EV for a, a little further down the line, especially like you mentioned, you know, the kind of tech that's required any which ways for a four wheeler EV is something a little more complex. It's something that will require a lot of capital. And then you have this entire, uh, you know, shortage of the very basic raw material that is required, you know, by EVs. Uh, to what extent will it push, um, you know, India's EV advancements uh, and particularly in the PV space? Well, uh, clearly the supply chain issue that we are facing in the industry because of semiconductor is uh, unprecedented. Uh, in my working in the industry for 40 years, I've never seen a supply chain issue as severe and as global uh, as the current current issue is. And unfortunately, uh, the end is not in sight. Uh, there's nobody who is able to say with definitive uh, conviction that in six months, nine months, one year, and this problem will be behind us. So it is a major problem where there is no uh, easy or no short-term or immediate solution. Not so just short-term, but immediate solution. Now, will that have an impact on EV taking off is a very interesting question. Um, and EVs, in fact, do use more semiconductor chips uh, than, than a traditional car. And one logic, therefore, could be that will, therefore, EV slow down. Uh, in India, in India, I don't see that happening because our volume is very small. Uh, if the volume was large, then there may be a preference for automakers to make five IC engine vehicle than uh, compared to one electric vehicle. I don't know the ratio is five to one, but certainly more than two to one. Uh, there, but in India, the volume being so small, I don't think this is going to slow down uh, the ramp up. And by the time India need, reaches any sort of, uh, let's say, meaningful volume, of electric vehicles by then the problem will be certainly behind us uh, let's say that will happen by end of 23 early 24 
uh, is the soonest that India will reach a large volume in passenger vehicle in electric vehicles. And therefore, therefore, uh, I don't think that semiconductor will have an effect on electric vehicle uh, sort of uh, ramp up uh, in India because we are at a very small base. But certainly, it's going to ha it's, it is having a tremendous impact in the in the immediate term short term on um, on passenger vehicle uh, volumes as you have seen in the industry and uh, all automakers are at which and they don't know how to tackle it uh, especially the demand being as strong as it is yeah exactly i mean at this point of time automakers may be thinking look let me at least first cater to the uh, you know the pipeline of demand that's already existing uh, before i move on to you know consider uh, using a bulk of semiconductors towards my ambitious uh, ev plans um, so, Dr. Goenka, the one thing that we've established is also the fact that today an electric vehicle um, does require many more times metal, uh, you know, many more times semiconductor chips, etc. So, it's, it's um, you know, very component heavy. It's very material heavy. Uh, you've mentioned that down the line, um, you know, once um, we get a little more used to and familiar with the entire EV bit, and you know we add in scale that's when evs will start reducing in cost do you think that in the beginning how do you see cost shaping up for evs versus a regular ice uh, vehicle because that in itself will be the first deterrent for individuals you know to choose between an ice and an ev so it's so that there, there are two or three angles to it it's it's not an easy question to answer the reason i'm saying two three angles to it is it depends very heavily in terms of consumer price depends very heavily on how long will the government of india be able to continue with the famous scheme and how long the lower gst that electric vehicles enjoy will last uh, if we assume that to be the case if you assume that the famous scheme and uh, gst uh, reduction or gst uh, lower GST will continue for, let's say, next three to five years. Uh, I think in three to five years, the automakers would be able to bring the cost down uh, to a level where it may be a small premium, 8%, uh, 10% premium on, uh, on ICE engine. And I certainly believe that the consumers will be willing to pay the 8 to 10% premium on, on electric vehicle because of lower cost of running. Uh, keep in mind that the diesel petrol prices are going up and they will continue to go up. There may be some, some valleys that happen in dips, some happen in between, but they'll, overall the, the trajectory will be to go up. And, and given that, uh, and given that electricity is likely to get cheaper uh, because of the renewables coming in uh, and, uh, and, and the fact that the renewables now costing two and a half uh, rupees a, a, a unit to produce, uh, my guess is electric uh, cost will come down uh, at, with, with time and therefore electric vehicles will become more affordable. So, so a summary answer to what you asked is that it's important for electric vehicles to get a good volume uh, that the famous scheme and the lower GST continue for three to five years. That will be sufficient time for the automakers to build a scale because scale is very important. The whole uh, focus of PLI scheme on the ACC, the advanced chemistry cells, uh, will also bring in the cells manufacturing in India that will further reduce the cost. And as everybody has been saying, it's important that the battery cost come down below uh, $100 uh, for the module and maybe $125 for the battery uh, per, per kilowatt hour. And once we reach that point, uh, and uh, in India, again, I'm saying it's three to five years away, uh, perhaps the electric vehicles can survive without too much incentive uh, coming from uh, uh, from the government. Uh, survive in the sense that uh, be, become cost effective for the consumer to buy uh, uh, without uh, without uh, too much of incentive coming from uh, from government of India. As you have seen that in many of the countries outside India, uh, the electric vehicle support has been uh, significantly reduced or completely removed. And even then, the, uh, the, the volumes are going up. India is probably five to seven years behind that curve. And we have to therefore ride that curve for next five years and get to a point where we have 10% of our vehicles uh, electric. And, and that will be the inflection point where the cost will start coming down. And it's a very difficult uh, balance uh, uh, balance uh, that, that we have to make because uh, inherently uh, the cost of making electric vehicle is high because motors cost a lot of money, the batteries cost a lot of money, the power electronics is very expensive. And while the cost will come down, uh, will come down to a level where without government incentive, electric vehicles can uh, can can uh, manage the cost parity. That's the big question. With government uh, incentive, I don't see a major problem. Dr. Goenka, great to have you on the show today and good to get in all the insight from you as always.
थैंक यू